growing up in Macon, it was kind of difficult. I lived on the bad side of town. You know, I'm, there, there are all these horrible influences in town and everything like that. Parents divorced. My parents were never really there in childhood. I only had my aunt. I have this dream of being a doctor. I, I gotta go to school somehow. I, I gotta do something. You know, dreams do happen. And with education together, I was really given a tremendous opportunity. In Macon, we have problems with education. We have a low high school graduation rate. And many of these students where there's abject poverty and generational poverty, they don't have an opportunity to go to college. There's a thing called um, generational wealth, and there's also generational poverty. And my family was in the generational poverty area. When I was born, I literally had nothing to my name, and my family probably had very little to theirs. And I knew that if I want to be a dad, I want to have kids, I don't want my kids to have to sit back and think, wow, if my parents had just went to college and did all these things, we could be, you know, I could have something kind of in line for me. And I believe in uh, the way that higher education changes lives, the way it empowers lives. And I've seen um, what education did for my father when he decided as an adult with four children to go to college. This is the baby picture. <laughs> yeah. I never forget this photo. Initially, Walter was supposed to have on a short set tuxedo. However, he was not having that tuxedo jacket. Both my parents worked a lot. Uh, my dad was the safety coordinator for Georgia Power. My mom, um, she actually had two jobs. So sometimes I wouldn't see her till about nine o'clock at night. It wasn't until my aunt decided that she wanted me to go to private school that everything kind of turned around. Private school pretty much paved the way for him to, you know, he learned, you know, Mandarin Chinese, he knew French, he knew all of these things. And he's just this little two year old boy. Like, you know, you're like, you're supposed to be out playing and stuff. She's who took me to school, picked me up, made sure I was going to my sports, um, extracurriculars, fiegel trips. She always wanted him to be better, to, you know, she instilled in him that you're going to be a great person. You're, you know, you're going to, you, you, you have to do these things. I mean, they were going around to the nursing homes and visit, visiting the elderly and giving back to the homeless. I was probably about maybe eight or nine or so. Um, my aunt was diagnosed with breast cancer. It was my first kind of, you know, knowledge of what cancer actually was. She was able to take me to her doctor's appointments. I actually talked with her doctor and things like that. I think that's what kind of sparked the whole science is cool and I need to learn more about this. This is the microscope that my aunt got me when I decided I wanted to go and do science things. And he asked for it for Christmas. And I was like, what child asked for a microscope? And not the kitty microscope. He wanted a real one, like the ones that they use in labs and stuff. And that's when he really just was interested in like the body. I think because my aunt loved me um, having good grades and being in school and everything like that, I in turn just loved having good grades and being in school and going to school every day. Seeing that you, your, your good grades are making someone happy and that you, you know, if you have these good grades throughout life, you know, you can probably go to college and be a doctor or be the president and things like that. I guess that's kind of what kind of drove me.
when she passed away, it hit him and it hit him hard. It was, is he going to go left or is he going to go right? Is he going to shut down or is he still going to be this person, this smart person we know him to be? Education Together has two missions. A short-term mission to defray the cost of college for students who need that financial boost and long-term to entice those students to stay here after graduation. You know, 22 percent of our students this fall are first-generation college students, so it's, it's a natural fit, I think, for young people who, uh, who really crave the opportunity. Guidance, all guidance, all motivation completely disappeared. I was always um, somebody looking for um, looking for the kids that I thought would have a great, you know, have some chances to do something, and they just needed some help. I honestly feel that she took me kind of under her wing personally and became that motivation that I lost when my aunt passed away. So I kind of looked to her literally as a relative. Walter just was one of those um, students. I mean, he just sparkled. I remember about his, you know, about his aunt and how she had helped him. And then when she heard she wasn't there, well, his mom and the, his family really didn't know how to um, push him toward that goal. I remember pulling him in probably at the very beginning of the year for him and um, asking him about, well, what are your SAT or your ACT scores? And he said, what are you talking about? No one in my family had ever been to college. And I thought, honestly, I thought the PSAT is what all I needed. And until I realized that the P stood for practice. <laughs> Miss Craco told me, you have to take the SAT if you want to get into college. And so I took it in a panic, uh, made a decent score, and I took the ACT maybe like a couple days later and made a decent score on that as well. Um, his aunt always wanted him to go to Mercer. And so in the back of his mind, there was that, that, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go to Mercer. But when he told me he got accepted, that just blew my mind. For me, I jumped all over the house <laughs> when I first found out he had got, and I might've cried a little bit. But the obstacle was still money. Like I'm literally helping my mom afford rent and helping my mom afford bills, I was $3,000 away from being able to afford school. We, there's no way $3,000 was gonna come out of the air to pay for college, especially being that you go to college for four years, that was just for a semester. That definitely put me in a huge rut of I'm gonna work at Ink Candle for the rest of my life. While it was an unfortunate incident when my parents decided they were going to separate, I said, okay, my mom is struggling right now. We're struggling right now. I have to do something to help out. And literally started going to work. I was either, if I was not at Omoga Traders, I was at the Macon soccer field or the Warner Robins um, CFCGA soccer fields every Saturday, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, um, refereeing for, for the youth. Walter has that quality though where he doesn't give up. And this is where scholarships came in. The Gates Millennium Scholarship, um, there's about a, there was about a thousand students from all over the country that were selected for this. I was in Hail Mary mode basically. I needed this Hail Mary scholarship to come through. So Walter um, was really in the top running. He really was. And I worked and I worked and I wrote paper after paper after paper and met with alumni after alumni after alumni to do this scholarship. So I said, I know you can, I know you will get this because he just, he hit all the buttons on it. Parents divorced, my parents were never really there in childhood. I only had my aunt and then now I have no one because my 
my aunt died. <laughs> so I'm like, I literally have no one. I need this scholarship. Well, there was, a, he didn't, he didn't get it. It was hard. We were both, I was, I was upset. He was upset. When we started to look at these applications, it really wasn't first-generation college student as much as it was poverty, a lot of times generational poverty. So there's a lot of students in this area with a lot of potential, and that potential was never being utilized because they couldn't afford to go to college. My story is not that great. I mean, I didn't get Gates, so it's clearly not amazing. I mean, okay, my parents divorced. Okay, my aunt died. Okay, you know, I have this 4.0 in school and everything, and I still can't afford school. It's not that great. We had two people that did get it. I mean, I was literally surrounded by two people who got it. <laughs> literally, they were sitting like, two people who got the scholarship are sitting next to me, and I'm just like, I'm never going to go to college because your story was always better than mine. Hey, what's going on, bud? Doing good. Telling them the other day, uh, that was a couch where when I didn't get Gates Millennium, mm -hmm. I literally came in here, sat on that couch, and like burst into tears, like straight tears. And Miss Krenko was like, she was like, it's okay, typing away on the computer. <laughs> Just go ahead and, and then, ahead. get it out. Then two other people came in and they were like, Miss Krenko, I got Gates Millennium. And she got good time. And then it was not good timing. You know what, Walter? It wasn't the end of the world, was it? It was not the end of the world. It was not in the world. You survived. You I survived. Did quite well. I did not think I was going to survive, but I indeed did survive. And, and, I, and I said, Walter, this isn't the end of the road. You know, you're going to be able to get other scholarships. We just have to put them together. Her thing was, you have over a thousand community service hours helping out with your dad at his church, helping out with your mom at her church. You literally referee from 7 a.m. to sometimes 7 p.m. half the time um, for kids. She said, you need to find local people who, are, who want kids like you. I got Peyton Anderson, and that was 12.50 per semester. And then I got jocks. That was, that was another thousand. And then I got education together another 1250. I am at my mark right now. I go meet with my financial advisor and um, something, something in my financial aid changed. So I was again put back once more from going to college for just a mes like a measly like 500 bucks. I had emailed my financial aid advisor at Mercer and I said, I said, I really want to go to this school. I really can't afford it. And I said, I know I'm so close to affording it. There must be something that I can do. I said, I don't have the money. And that literal cry for help is what changed my entire life. I was sitting in the room of graduation with all my friends and I got this email from Mercer and it said, congratulations. It literally read, you have been given a $3,000 scholarship to attend school. Um, this will be added to your financial aid package. And I checked the website and my balance was like negative, like $1,000. And I was like, I'm finally gonna be able to go to school. I'm finally gonna be able to do the things that I want to do. And I remember sitting in that room and just tears running down my face. And I like, to the point, got up, went to, went to go hug my counselor, and I was like, we did it. What the Education Together program is all about is identifying talented young people that might not otherwise have an opportunity. Provide them that opportunity here locally and hopefully retain them. Keeping those students here to avoid that brain drain, that absolutely is 
one of the prime missions, that long-term mission for education together. I've known I've wanted to stay in Macon for the longest. With Education Together, I was really given a tremendous opportunity um, when I was able to meet the president of Navison Health. We make sure we connect those students with each other, with their college, with community leaders, and people throughout the community. Every year there's at least one reception where the students and the partners come together. That's where um, Walter met Ninfa Saunders. It wasn't until we were, we were going around and she said, I'm the president and CEO of Navizant Health, and most literally, my jaw dropped. <laughs> I had this moment in my head that was like, it's now or never either do something or regret it for the rest of your life. And I said, hey, my name is Walter, and, and she stopped me. She was very impressed with his intelligence, his ambition, and his warmth. And she handed him a business card and said, call my secretary and make an appointment. To listen to this person, to this Walter, this incredible Walter, talk about his dream, talk about his, how he grew up, the adversities that he'd gone through, and how that never really stopped him from dreaming, and that the only thing he really needed was an opportunity to turn those dreams into reality. That was really all that I needed. She said, I'm here to change your life and to launch your career. I'm ready to open the door. Are you ready to walk through? And he said, yes, ma'am, I am. Before I know it, I'm working at Central Transport at the hospital in grunt level position. Of all positions that are grunt level, this is probably the gruntiest of position, <laughs> positions. Um, as part of our agreement um, with Dr. Saunders and that we talk about more opportunities, I messaged her um, about how I could go about somehow getting into an OR somewhere to observe. It was a stretch. We had him connected to one of our trauma surgeons. I told the surgeons, be kind to him, be nice to him. This may be his first time in the OR. I find myself gown and gloved, like I said, gown and gloved, putting beta down on a patient, about to watch a full on surgery. And that is where I knew that some great, some awesome things had happened in my life. <laughs> We may not be the big city like San Francisco and New York City is, but we are a city with a heart, and that's something that we are very proud of. Macon is this big country town of a place. That's the one thing about Macon. There are so many people that are willing to help. All you have to do is ask. There are a lot of great scholarship programs out there, but a lot of that money goes elsewhere. But here, it's what I call the perfect circle. Money raised locally, for local students to stay local. So yeah, we're building that economy from within. When I tell people now what I do, they're just, they just look at me and they're like, how the heck did you land that? One partner begets another partner and they do such wonderful things for us. So Walter is already making an impact in the community at large. So he's not going to be just this Walter, he's going to be Walter and beyond. I could see him not just being a trauma surgeon, but I could see him paying it forward and being a mentor or being part of leadership of that hospital. He's someone who's He's gonna do special work. And I have a lot of expectations. Walter is just the first. I would not be surprised at all if somebody says to me they're following the same path. They're, they're top flight students. Uh, students that are planning on uh, becoming doctors and lawyers and ministers.
we help with all the connections that we help them find, that we foster, that they're gonna be enticed to stay here. My hope is that many more organizations will look at this not as a responsibility, but a calling, an avocation to step up. Knowing that I was once at a point where it could have gone either way, um, it makes me thankful for everything that has happened. The good, the bad, the ugly, doesn't matter what it was. I mean, even if I go to school somewhere else and learn so much more, I plan to come back to this community and get back to this community by working at that hospital. I mean, that's just, that's just, that's, it's gonna happen.